I think part of the thing about drawing the figure is to exhibit the muscles as an aesthetic theater, not just as, you know, I see a lump there, I see a bump there. How do you charge the form or change the form slightly so it has more um, kind of loveliness or, you know, elegance or something, you know? So there's a sense of, you know, really copying but kind of polishing out the choices of lengths and stuff like that. It's so arty and so, you know, Hollywood to um, close your eye and do these things. If you take measurements at different angles, you really are, you know, circumventing and holding the thing together. The thing about this pose, too, is that he's balanced on both legs, which is not as easy to get as the simple contrapposto than you can do from the frontinelle through the zygomatic down into nipple and the old counts, you know. In my life, I was lucky. My first wife, my father-in-law, was an internist at the Amsterdam Catholic Hospital in Amsterdam. And, um, and I was really, in my moment of that life, saying, you know, I really want to see not just the outside, but the inside of a body. So um, Dr. Pompin got me to go to the Catholic Hospital, to the anatomy part. And the tram was late, so I kind of ran there with some drawing material. You know. And this man, a small Dutch guy, had died about five and a half hours before. And, you know, it was really odd, but they had him laid out on the slab, you know, in a very cold place. And there, cigarette smoking was all over the place, you know. The, the guy who was about to open this, this dead person up was constantly chain smoking, chain smoking, you know, Dutch guy, tall guy. So when I showed up and I, you know, I got there, uh, I didn't know, like, he was going to, as soon as I stepped in the area of the light, when he opened the rib cage, you know, and the thing that was released was not just information, uh, it was also the horrible smells of the, all the stuff that went in his body chemically, you know, it was horrible. You know, the Dutch guy looked at me, and he had the cigarette, and he said to me in English, he says, isn't it great? His ashes went in the body. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I have to give my lunch back to the street or something. You know? So I came back in about five minutes, and I, I was, it was cool. And uh, I proceeded to kind of see the other extractions of the organs and all that. And it's all messy in there. It's all nothing, really. It's, it's a lot of bone here and a lot of bone there, and some very complicated organs in the middle. And they're all demonstrating themselves for the first time in stillness. So death is absolute stillness. You know. And when death is there, death is stillness. You know. And um, so I don't know what happened to the corpse involved, but I think after I left there, um, I went back on the tram in Amsterdam, and you know, I, I suddenly felt I had X-ray vision, you know, like Superman or something. You know. And I really felt I could see the volume and the weight of all those bones and the muscles accumulating into the feet, you know. And the thing you know about Rembrandt is Rembrandt was also a guy who must have seen, with Dr. Tulp, you know, when he does the anatomy lessons, he must have seen uh, some exercising of autopsies there too. Um, 
And so I think what is amazing about the Rembrandt painting, and, and Rembrandt is like a smart ass in the picture, was he wants to show the man talking in the picture, but he's talking in terms of the pulling of uh, certain aspects of this dead man's arm, the tendons of the forearm, and how that tendon would lift certain finger motions. You know. and, and all the guys are bending over and watching his visual voice in the picture. You know. So it's a wonderful picture for anatomy, uh, a doctor of anatomy. When I teach anatomy, we used to have the possibility of seeing autopsies. And now it's, for, it's very hard uh, because there's so much diseases and floating things around that they don't want to be given uh, a legal action that somebody got uh, some hard to deal with disease from the cadaver. You know. So even with masks, it's tricky. But I think the, the important thing is if you're going to be a figurative painter or a figurative drawer, drawer or sculptor or whatever, I think the important thing is to know the physicality of the anatomy of the human body and know it to a degree where, you know, you're, uh, you see it as theater, you see it as choices and possibilities. And this man's uh, ankles are very nice, by the way. You know, the other way to do, deal with forms is to deal with, um, take the fontanelle of the chin, uh, take that measurement of the head through the body, and you get, I mean, I think he's going to be about eight and three quarters head high. He's very well proportioned. But you could do that just by measuring with a pencil. You know, you know. And so all these little tricks are interesting. But the thing is, if you don't know anatomy, you're watching him too much. If you know anatomy, it's 50-50. You watch him, you play with it, you watch him, you play with it. You, know. and you then live in the drawing as a poet and not as a copyist. You know, that's the whole thing. But um, I think the important thing is if um, at some point you can see an autopsy, it would be really good. And it, it just changes your whole view of volume and mass and weight. Because if you don't know that volume and mass and weight, you cannot make a representation that is stronger than the thing you're watching. When Michelangelo does his drawings, which are incredible, um, he's using a lot of tricks. And because I speak some Italian too, uh, one of the things they say in Italian is the muscles are called eggs, or wovi, eggs, plural. And so that they would say to each other in Italian, I guess, like, uh, you know, I really like the way you did that series of eggs. They weren't talking about muscles, they were talking about the forms, you see. Uh, and of course, the Catholic Church uh, did forbid. Um, the use of finding this study by candlelight with the priest. And all that. But the priests were pretty open to the artist. And um, all I know is that uh, the more you know, the more you can control the form. Yeah. And uh, this man is a very good model. Very good model. Yeah. You should clone him or something. <laughs> Thank you.